All right, um, let me also briefly talk about credit score, credit score, credit score. You heard me yesterday make a video about credit score. Um, in the Western world, we have a credit system. Um, normally, people who are eligible for credit are people who have valid immigration status, which is more than six months. You may be eligible for some credit from the banks or financial institutions. So, for example, a student who is studying more than six months in Canada is automatically eligible for credit or some kind of loan from banks. Um, somebody who is a worker in the UK or in the US and has a valid work permit will be eligible for credit. And somebody who is also a permanent resident or a citizen automatically is also eligible for credit. Now, the requirements for getting credit or loans from banks are very, very easy. Some of them don't even require anything. So let me start with the very least of them. In Canada, for example, for all international students, the moment you arrive and you open a bank account, you do not even ask for it. The banks will give you a credit card just because you open an account with them. For international students who are doing their postgraduate studies like masters or PhD, most banks will give them minimum 1,000 Canadian dollars on a credit card to use. Now it means that the bank gives you a card, which is a loan from the bank and they have put money on it for you to use. The amount they are putting on it is 1,000 Canadian dollars or more. If you are in a college in Canada, most banks will give you between $500 to $1,000 on a credit card. If you are a worker, full-time worker, meaning you came on a work visa, or if you are a permanent resident and you have just arrived as a permanent resident brand new in Canada, most banks will qualify you for anything between 1000 to 3000 Canadian dollars in credit card uh, loans. Now, remember, the credit card is just a piece of card. You can use it to shop. The idea behind a credit card is to make payment and buying of goods easy. It's also to allow people to use money which is not theirs. Basically, credit card has money which belongs to the bank. So the money on the credit card is not your personal money. It is money belonging to the bank. Of course, like they say, banks don't give money for free. If they give you money, there are terms and conditions. There may be charges here and there. Now, the way credit cards work in most developed countries is that there is an interest rate charge on it per annum. There is an annual interest rate charge on a credit card. Now, the average interest rate you find on credit cards will be anything above 20% to about 26%. 20% to 26% on a credit card, okay? However, it is not the case that when a bank gives you a credit card, then it begins charging you the interest right away. I used to think like this to my people. When a bank gives you a credit card, so I'm gonna use an example here. Asure Manche, ni amasa the second. Asure Manche, Asure Manche, Manche, ni amasa the second, just arrived in Canada. I'm using this as an example. So Nia Masan II arrived in Canada. He is doing his master's degree in a university here in Canada. He went to one of the banks in Canada to open his student account. And then upon um, opening the account, they told him that, oh, you are eligible for a credit card, a student credit card. So we are going to issue with a credit card. He doesn't know what a credit card is. But then the bank said it comes with your account. So, okay, they gave him a card. Now they has $1,000 limit on it. What does it mean? It means he can use up to $1,000 on that credit card anytime he wants to. All right. Now, how does the interest system work? If Ni Amasa II never uses the credit card, he is not charged an interest. I repeat, if he never uses the credit card, that interest rate of 20 something percent is never applied. The only time it gets applied is when it is used. I have one of my credit cards right now. I have about $30,000 on that credit card. The interest rate on that credit card is 0%, actually, meaning when I use it, I don't have to pay until about 18 months. But if I don't use it, I don't get charged at all. The only time you get charged is when you use it. That's the first thing I want you to know about credit card. The second thing I want you to know about credit card is that there is a grace period 
for you to use the credit card and not be charged an interest. For most banks, it is 20 days after usage. So let me give you an example. I have a credit card. Let me use this as an example. So let's say I got this credit card from uh, a bank here in Canada. This credit card. It has $1,000 on it. I went to buy fuel or I went to buy something at a store and then I use it to pay. You see the amount that I just used, right? I will never be charged an interest on it. On the amount, if the interest is charged on the amount you've used, not on the, on the overall limit. It is charged on whatever you used. So if you use $20 or if you use $50 and they decide to charge you the interest, they charge you the interest on the $50 you've used. Now this is what happens. The grace period for credit card is that within the first 20 days, when you use it, there is no interest charge. It is only when you go past the 20 days and you have not paid it back that they begin calculating the interest on it. I hope that makes sense. So if you have a $1,000 credit right now and you use it to go and shop, there is no interest charge until after 20 days when they begin calculating the interest. Now, so here is what those who are financially smart will mostly do. When you use a credit card, they have a way of setting up an auto payment on their online bank account. And then they will link their credit card to their online bank account in such a way that when it is getting to the 20 day period, it automatically just pays it off using their actual checking account. So these people do not have to stress. In fact, that is how I've structured most of my credit cards. So when I use it, I don't even have to worry about, you know, my bank account just goes on and then why is it within a certain time? The idea behind it is that as much as you are using somebody else's money, which is the bank's money, you are using it wisely and you are not getting charged an interest. Now, those who will be charged interest are those who go beyond the 20 days and they never pay. At that point, the bank says, okay, it looks like you've gone past your grace period. We will, it's time for us to begin making some profit off of the loan we gave you. I hope you understand how it works. And remember, if you have a credit card or if you have any loan amount, right, especially credit loans that I'm talking about like this one, and you do not use it, you never get charged. M most credit cards are also revolving credit cards. Revolving, revolving, evolve, revolve. What is that? It simply means the amount you have on a card as your limit. When you use it and you pay it off, it returns back to where it is and you reuse it. Basically, revolving is recyclable, meaning you can continue reusing and reusing and reusing. Let me give another example. Nia Masa has 1000 He used $500 to shop. The remaining balance that will be on the credit card is $500 because it was $1,000, he used $500. The moment he pays off the five hundred dollars, he still will go back to having one thousand because he has paid off the one five hundred dollars. So now the money will return back to the card and make it one thousand. He can go back and reuse that one thousand. When he pays it off, he goes back and reuse it. So basically, the money is available to him to use any time, so long as he has enough limit on it, he can use it. Revolving means that it's not like you use a one thousand and after using it, it's gone. You can now use it again. No, you can use it all the time, so long as you pay off. You can continue to reuse it, reuse it, and reuse so long as you are paying or servicing it. Credit cards are considered the basic tool for determining the credit worthiness of an individual in advanced countries. What does that mean? If any financial institution wants to tell whether you are credit worthy to be loaned money, they will check how you use credit cards. You know why? People who are financially very, very disciplined, when they use credit cards, they pay off on time. People who are financially indisciplined, they always will abuse a credit card. So when a bank looks at your credit transaction, they can tell whether you are somebody who can handle loans or you cannot handle loan. You see it. If a bank gives you $1,000 on credit card and then you use more than $1,000 and you never pay it off within 20 days, or you never pay it off within three, four months, definitely the bank will begin charging you interest. Now, when you go take a loan from another company, they look at the father, oh my God, this, this guy here, he couldn't even service a $1,000 loan. 
Does it make sense if we want one? He's coming for twenty thousand from us. He, dude could not even pay the one thousand <laughs> that he's used. So banks will use your credit history or your credit transactions and use that to make decisions about your credit behavior. In fact, there are so many transactions in the Western world that will encourage people to use credit cards to pay. Most, most phone bills are paid with credit cards, even though you can also use your debit card to pay. Most phone bills are paid, so my phone bills go on my credit card. My utility bills, my water bill, my... Basically, there are so many things that credit cards goes to pay. When I go to shop, I never use my debit card, even though that's my money. I use credit card. Why? Because I want the banks to see that I'm a credit-worthy person. That when I use their money on the card, I pay it off. Now, what it does is that as you are using credit cards and you are paying them off, you are being rated. You are being graded. You are being evaluated on your credit spending behavior and how you pay them off. Now, the act of grading or evaluating an individual's use of credit and when they pay them off is what leads to what we call credit score. A credit score is a score assigned to people based on their credit habit, how they use credit and how they pay them off. In Canada, where I live, there is a whole organization created by the government of Canada called the Credit Bureau. And all they do is to keep data on people's spending behavior, credit behavior. Credit Bureau of Canada. All they do is to collect data on people's credit history. They collect the data from financial institutions. They collect the data from utility companies. They collect the data from landlords. They collect the data. So I, as a landlord, if my tenants do not pay rent on time, all I have to do is to report them to the credit bureau that this tenant never pays rent on time and it goes on their record. So if that tenant goes looking for another place to rent and that landlord does credit check, you'll find out that this guy has a bad record of not paying his rent on time. Do you know how important this is? It helps you as a landlord to determine, make a decision whether he wants to still rent to that guy or not to rent to that guy. Credit score helps to tell where people are. Now in Canada, our credit score is on a scale between 300 to 900. 300 to 900, that is a score. Based on where your numbers are, it determines your credit rating. Anybody who starts building credit will start around 300 because you just started. It means you just acquired a credit card or you just took some loan or you just took something. Remember, credit score is for measuring your credit. So if you never use credit, you never get scored. Those of you who use debit card, this is where you learn this. If you keep using just your debit card, you do not have a credit score because your debit card is your own money. There is no way to tell your credit score. If you use your checking all the time to do all businesses, you have a zero credit score because there is no loan or no credit card you've taken. So there is no way of measuring your credit worthiness. So those of you who've decided to use your debit card throughout, congratulations on that decision. You know why you're making them, but I want you to expect no credit score because there is no way of determining how you use other people's money. Do you see it? Debit score, zero credit score. Credit cards or loans, you can actually start getting your score. Why? They will begin to tell how you use other people's money aside from yours. I am not teaching you to go and use credit card. I'm not encouraging you to go and use credit card, but I want you to understand how these things work. Maybe it's your own personal choice not to use credit card. I respect that. But I want you to understand how credits work. You score from 300, 400, you are rated as having a poor credit history. Simply means this person is more likely to default when we loan him money. Now, for you to buy a house in Canada, if you are planning to use a loan from a bank or a financial institution or any mortgage, which we call bank loan to buy a house, they will check your credit score. Guess what? They will check your credit score. In Canada, the minimum credit score you need to have to buy a house is 680 points, which is basically like B, E plus or B so. Yeah, I think it's B plus or so. 680 out of 900. 
So if you I want to buy a house and I check your credit score or the banks check your credit score and you are below 680, it simply means this person is more likely to default on paying their mortgage on time. Anybody with more than 680 points is more likely to qualify for a mortgage. It simply means that they are on top of their credit. They use, they pay on time. They use, they pay on time. They pay their phone bills on time. They pay their utility bills on time. They pay this on time. If they have a car loan, they make their payments on time. Of course, there are some people who will be in a high score. Anything from 780 going is considered really good, like an A class, like A plus going. Some people actually get 780, 800, 850 going to 900. Those people are like premium guys. When they go for credit, they get approved easily. Why? Everything about their score shows that they are on top of their credit. They know how to pay on time. But at least to buy a house, you need, you need to have about 680 credit score. Now, an immigrant or a new person who starts using credit, whether credit card or whatever form of loan he's taking, will need close to two years to build a credit score. So if you are new in Canada, you may be needing close to two years to build a decent credit score. You are now going to start paying your phone bill and sometimes they could use between 12 months to 24 months to determine your credit behavior. There are people who actually travel abroad or to the, some Western countries and they say they never want to use credit card. They want to use their own money. Sometimes they make those decisions because of personal reasons, religious reasons. Sometimes they make them because they just do not know how to use credit card. Some people also do not use credit card because they are financially indisciplined. They just don't know how to handle money, right? Think of it like the wife or the husband who goes to shop and, you know, like, like me. Some, I'm very, very financially disciplined, but there are some things I'm obsessed about them. Let me give you an example. I went to Best Buy just two, three weeks ago just to go and pick up a sub woofer for my 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 entertainment session that i built uh, if you saw my fireplace that i built i went to just go and buy a cyber when i got inside best buy this sales guy who is an indian guy i don't know whether it was magic he used sweet talk before i realized subwoofer where they go buy i started buy 85 in tv charlie I go to buy 85 in TV on top of Sawufa. Meanwhile, I no plan to go buy uh, 85 in TV. Because the guy sold me, he, 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 you can tell that guy is a serious sales guy. I don't know how he managed to enter my brain, but he got me to <laughs> buy a TV. So somebody like me, right, I need to have somebody on my side who can checkmate me when it comes to spending. Because when I see things that I like, I may just buy them. Thankfully, my wife is my checkmate. She is financially disciplined. That woman that she controls every single dot. <laughs> you see her? So even when I was buying the TV, you know what I told the guy? I said, man, you're going to put me in trouble. When I go home, my wife is going to give me a stick about it. You see? My wife is going to give me a stick. And guess what happened? When I go home, I didn't even land. She started giving me a stick. We must return that TV. <laughs> and truth be told, we return the TV. <laughs> if you watch my video, you may have noticed that. I said that they are going to come and pick the TV because it was too big. <laughs> Thankfully, the TV was way too big for the wall. <laughs> so we had to call the company and say we no longer want it. And they came and picked it at their expense, by the way, not at our expense. Return all our money to us. <laughs> but all I'm saying here is that some people, hey, some people just don't have discipline. I am one of them. I could buy things that I don't need. I used to, in fact, I'm way better now. I used to look, sometimes I would buy this and I realize, oh, did I really need that? Just because the money is available on a credit card. Now I am way better and more disciplined. But even with that, that is why I said, look, if you are working, you need to work with somebody who is going to check your weaknesses. So me, my wife is my number one accountability police, police officer. If I want to overspend, she'll check me. If I want to go and buy something brand new, she'll ask me whether we could have gotten it for a better deal. If, look, look at it. She's the one who led us to buying this used Honda for three thousand eight hundred. If I, even even though we have the money, if you want to buy a brand new, you ask us. Can we got another deal? <laughs> right. You everybody needs someone like this in your life. You need. I'm not hiding my weaknesses. I'm telling you. So if you are the type who does not know how to handle money, some of you, the moment is it? Is it? You, do you know that song? Somebody should call it. Say, money they call you for your brain. You see that song? 
Uh, some of you, the moment you get the money on the credit card, like the, 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 it it be like say all the things online they call you. Say, uh, yeah, yeah, start to call you for your brain. Wish, you know, wish that place, eh? All the things for which they will start to call you for your brain. Say, yeah, you have money on your credit card, eh? yeah, yeah, they call you Christmas shopping, everything is. Some people are like that too. They don't know how to control their spending. They just, oh my goodness, some wives are like that too. Some wives, they will tell you they are going to buy cooking oil at Walmart. The moment they are taking longer than 40 minutes, you know what is going on. They are shopping the entire Walmart. Then they come home and they bring the bill and then you look at it and say, oh my goodness. Wow. Some wives are like that. Some men are like that. You need to know yourself. Now, you know why I'm bringing all these examples in? The reason why a lot of people are afraid of credit card is because they do not know how to manage their finances. They will overuse it. Some people, in fact, you see, credit card means not your own money. And sometimes when things are not your own, we tend to abuse them, true or false. It's not your own money, isn't it? So we just go ahead and we swipe. We swipe, and then we swipe. But we forget we have to pay them off. You see, we forget the other aspect that there is a time to pay it. So those of you who don't want you to use credit card because of discipline, that's fine. But there are ways to do that and get it done better. For example, I have automated some of my payments or most of them. My mortgage payments are automatically automated. My utility bills are automated. My phone bills, I don't even check it. I know when the time is up, they will come straight into my bank account and they'll pull it or the credit card will pay itself all by using the... Basically, I've automated them so I don't have to stress myself about them. Credit card. Credit score, very important. Do you know? So now let me put some questions to you. Do you have a credit card? If the answer is yes. Or do you have some other forms of credit? Do you know your credit score? Don't be, don't be ashamed. I didn't know my credit score for more than two, three years when I was in Canada. Yet I had a credit card. Do you know what it means? Every single month or every two weeks, they update your score to show you how your spending history is looking like. The average person does not know their credit score. The average person does not know. Sometimes you can actually find your credit score on your online banking app. It shows you how your spending is looking like, where your score stands. It will tell you where you stand. But sometimes because of lack of financial knowledge, we just don't know all these things. There could be areas where you are hitting your credit score, but you don't know. The phone bill you didn't pay on time, do you know it can hurt your credit score? The mortgage payment that you miss can hurt your credit score. Or the missed payments, you know, they hurt your credit score. Oh, by the way, there are some people who also use more than they are allowed on a credit card. So, Ni Amasa has a credit limit of 1000 but then he decided to use more than 1000 on a credit card. Do you know some banks will allow you to use more than, we call it overdraft, more than you are allowed? You can. The moment you use more than you are allowed, you actually go into a serious negative score. You are allowed to use 1000 but then you are purchasing something and then you exceeded it and went over 1000 It simply means this guy is damn broke. He's actually going beyond what we've allocated to his damn broke. That's what it means. Some people even decide to pull actual cash from the ATM using their credit card. Do you know you can do that? You can also pull actual money from the ATM from your credit card. The, the bad news is that the moment you begin pulling actual cash from the ATM using your credit card, you are charged hefty, hefty, hefty interest. Because it shows that you are so broke, you have to actually take money out of your credit card. Credit cards are meant for online purchases and physical purchases and stuff, but not for taking physical cash out of it. But that option is still there. You could still take real cash out of it. But if you do, just know that it will impact your credit score negatively. All right. Um, are there times that I have actually deliberately gone above my credit usages? Oh, my goodness. 2020, when I bought one of my properties in Fort Erie, um, that was the beginning of COVID. I was doing the renovation and then I ran out of money for renovation. To be honest, I ran out of money. Got to a point my project was stuck. I, I was hoping that my bank would give me some soft loan to finish the renovation. They didn't give me. They said because of COVID, you know, COVID I think scared a lot of banks around that time. In March 2020, there about so banks that wanted to loan money all of a sudden were playing the hide and seek. They were not sure whether COVID was going to destroy the economy or not. So they, they started just being more careful. So my plan a of using the loan from the bank didn't work so i had to now figure out creative ways of using trust me i i exceeded my credit usages trust me 
Credit cards that were 5,000, I went over them to 8,000. Credit cards that were 3,000, I went above them to 6,000. In fact, it got to a point, some of the banks were calling me. Say, hey, Chaco, we just want to find out if you're okay because it looks like you've gone above the credit. And some of them were reminding me to pay. It got to a point I was so upset, I told them, please do not call me. I know how to use credit. Please don't call me. <laughs> and then when they see that you are not paying for a long time, they will begin to report you to what we call collections. It's called collections. If your bank begins to push your credit file, to a collections department, it simply means you are at the point where your credit score is beyond, like, it's scary. Normally it happens when people use more than they are supposed to or they don't make the payment for a long time. And the banks reach out to them to see if they are going to pay and then they are not trying to make the payment. Then the banks will begin activating collection. Now collection is like a third party agency that collects bad debts. So your bank will go and sell that debt you owe them. The bank basically goes to sell it to a third party company, collections agency, at a very discounted rate, and then they will have to come after you for the money. So if you owe your bank $5,000, your bank may go and sell that bad debt. They think it's bad debt, they can't take it, get it back from you. They'll go and sell it to a collections agency for let's say three, 4,000, and then the collections agency will consider that as, okay, if we are able to retrieve all of it, we can make profit, then they will come after you. And normally when you get to the point of collections, collections simply means, hey man, your credit score is negative. It's, it's gone down like that. It's just down. You know what I mean? So yeah, I went above my credit, but I had a game plan. So I want to tell you guys what my game plan was. In 2020, I went way above my credit usage. I exceeded all of them. Credit card, boom. All, all of them, boom. But here was my game plan. I deliberately went above them because I was using them to buy materials to do my renovation. I knew I would be done with the renovation in two, three months, if only I can use those credits smartly and still hurt my credit score deliberately. Truth is, I didn't have the money. Now, after using those credit cards, three months came down the line, four months came down the line, I was done with the renovation. Tenant number one came in, first and last month rent, $3,000. Tenant number two comes in, first and last month, boom, I took it, begin paying the, I began paying off the credit balances with the rent money that was coming out. The next month rent money came, I made enough profit because, you know, you, my rental properties actually bring more profit. I begin using it to service the credit. And I also knew all it takes is about three, four months to restore your credit if you are paying them. So even though I deliberately hurt my credit score, I knew within three, four months, I can pay them off and my credit will begin getting back to where it's supposed to be at. So I knew how to repair my credit. So I had a game plan. Now, by the way, the following year, I was going to refinance my property. That same property I was re re renovating, I was going to refinance it by going to the bank to tell them I've done some renovation, so I believe the value has gone up. I need them to come and reassess it, blah, blah, blah. Now, for me to go and refinance it, the bank was going to check my credit score. So, I definitely was not deliberately hurting my credit score, knowing that in six, seven months, I'm going to go to the bank to do a reassessment of my property. I had a clear game plan that even though I'm deliberately hurting my credit score, I know when I'm going to recover from it. To the point that by the time I would have gone to the bank for refinancing, I have already restored my credit to where it's supposed to be. And the truth is, I did that. My credit score went as low as what? Maybe 400? Maybe 400, they're about extremely poor. But before January 2021, my credit score was back to over 680. Actually, over 700. Why? Yours truly had already paid them off now. And yours truly knew all it takes is three, four months to bounce back. I had already taken care of them. The renovation was done, rent money was coming in, dude was back online. But you see, for you to be doing this, it simply means you know how credits work. You know how this tool works and you know how to go about it. There are some people who may take money. They don't have a clear idea how these things work. They do not know what next. And then they hear their credit score. The credit score stays down. Yeah, guess what? In Canada, there are so many things you cannot do without credit score. Did you hear what I just said? There are so many things you cannot do without credit score unless you have your own money. You cannot get a car on a loan 
from a dealership, a car selling company, dealership, without you having a credit score. They ain't going to give it to you. They won't loan you money to buy a car. Who is going to loan you money when they don't know your credit score? So that when it defaults, who is going to be the loser? Bad debt? You want to buy a house with a mortgage? A loan from the bank? You ain't got no credit score? Forget it. Nobody's going to give you the loan. Oh, renting a house. Most landlords will, ins will, will actually request for your credit score to rent a house to you. I do that. One of my properties that I was renting, there was a couple I wanted to rent a house to. Decent. The woman is a nurse. Caucasian. Hard-working lady. You can tell from her pay stop she works hard. Nurse. And you know nurses, they make good money. She was coming to stay in the property with her boyfriend. So during the rental application, I had this condition there that you must authorize me to pull your credit score. They agreed. I pulled the credit score. The lady's credit score came good. The other person who is the boyfriend who is going to be fiancé, check the credit score. It was around 300 there about. Red flag right away. So I had a meeting with them and I said, looks like your girlfriend's credit score is really good. Yours is not really up there. What could be the reason? Then he started talking. Oh, you know, I took some loan and I didn't pay. I did something and I didn't. But you know, I'm trying to get my stuff together. I'm going to be paying off. I was listening to him like this. You think me, I'm going to rent to you? You, you cannot pay your debt. You know what it means? Taking time bomb. You will be owing me rent money. Boom, I, dis I disqualified them. I didn't pick them. How did I make that decision? Credit score. If somebody is going to be paying their rent, their credit score will show. <laughs> I never take a tenant in without checking their credit score. I don't. And most landlords will ask for your credit score. So those of you who arrive in Canada and you've been looking for a place to rent, I hope you've been seeing that particular requirement there. Landlords will say credit score, credit score, credit score. You know why? Simply mean they can't tell how you handle money, <laughs> they're going to give you their place to live in. Because when you enter like a bear, B-E-A-R, and you don't pay, it's difficult for them to get you out. <laughs> It's not like Africa where a landlord can kick you out. Here in Canada, you just cannot kick a tenant out. It's difficult, damn difficult to kick a tenant out. So a landlord must therefore do his due diligence before taking a tenant in. I never take on a tenant without knowing the credit score. In fact, your financial history and how you handle money is so important to me because it tells me whether you can afford to pay my rent or you can pay it. That is why if you are living here today and you don't have a credit score and you are a tenant, it could be very difficult for you to actually be getting the next place to rent. In fact, some of you have had to pay crazy rent up to six months. I spoke with a Nigerian who just arrived in Canada as a permanent resident. He said it was difficult to find a place to rent to because they were all asking for credit score and I don't have it. Truth is we just arrived, brand new. How are you going to get credit score when you just landed? JGC. You just landed. There is no way you are going to have credit score. You are about to start building it. But the landlord is still require, requesting that. So, guess what? This guy has to now assure the landlord by committing himself or by promising the landlord I can pay you even up to one year rent. Which is illegal, by the way. It is illegal. The landlord is not the one asking you. The tenant is offering just to show the landlord that I'm too serious a guy. I won't mess up. It's not supposed to be so. Why? Because of the credit score requirement. Now, there have been some people who have tried getting around this. They are trying to buy something. They are trying to buy furniture using the credit, which is loan. And then they check their credit score and it's not good. Then they go looking for what we call co-signer. I repeat, co-signer. Co, C-O, sign. Somebody who is signing for you. Co-signer. What does it mean? A co-signer it's another person who you are trying to put on your application just because that person has a better credit score and you are hoping that their credit score can help you, the person with a bad credit score, to qualify for a certain credit facility. So Choco Melonia is trying to buy a car and I want to use a loan to buy the car and pay on a monthly basis or two weeks basis. But then my credit score is horrible. I have 500 points out of 900. The dealership or the car selling company say they are not going to sell it to me. Then I go and look for a friend of mine called Victory Foley Victor. 
Victory Foley Victor, who is on the screen right now. He's a friend of mine. Victory has a really good credit score. His credit score is over 700. And we are very good friends. So I beg Victory, Victory. Charlie, I don't want to do something, but these people say, unless I get co-signer, somebody will go co-sign. I beg you go fee, co-sign give me. You go fee. Now, Victory looks at his relationship with Choco Melody and say, oh my goodness, I trust Choco so well. Let me go and put my name on file to help him get the loan. All right. What, do, what is my position on credit score? Here is my position. Unless the person is your spouse that you trust 100%, do not co-sign for anyone. It is stupid. It is unwise. It is foolish. And as much as you trust the person, the good book, the Bible says, do not trust no one. There have been people who have co-signed for their friends and it cost them their relationships. You know why? That guy you are co-signing for, this is what it means. It simply means when dude messes up, it's on your name. If dude doesn't pay, you are the one who is deemed as responsible. In fact, co-signing for somebody simply means that if things go wrong, they are coming for you. <laughs> so you are equally liable as the person you are co-signing for. Now, so you want to ask yourself this question. Are you really ready for that? That this guy who is taking loan to buy a car and doesn't have good credit score, you are putting your credit score as a guarantee? If something goes bad and he doesn't pay, are you ready for that? Okay, he's trying to buy a house. His credit score is not good. So he wants you to go and co-sign so he can buy the house with the mortgage. When things don't go bad and do doesn't pay, it means the loan is on you. Are you ready for that? You say you trust him, he's been your best friend? I can give you a lot of best friend stories that ended up very sour. Me, Chaka Melonia, I don't co-sign for nobody, even if you are my own brother. I'm too wise to know things may not always go as intended. There are friends who called me and said, can you co-sign? I said, no. Go and work on your credit score. Yes. Encourage that person to start working on his credit score. Tell him to start putting his finances together. For you to go and co-sign for somebody who has a bad credit score simply means you know he does not know how to handle money. Yet you are putting your name on that stuff there. Can I give you an interesting example? A Nigerian was trying to buy a house. Did not have the necessary financial documents and stuff, stuff, stuff to buy the house. So decided to get a friend as a co-signer. He had all the documents. The friend came on there. Now, the arrangement was that this person is the one buying the house, all right. But he only needed the other person's call to booster and qualify. He got it done. The house was purchased in the name of the first guy. The co-signer name is on there. But remember what we said, when there is any liability, he affects the co-signer, right? Now, this co-signer later on came and said, you know, after one or two or how many years later, said, we must sell this house. So the guy said, ah, but this house is my own. He said, ah, you forget to say my name, there. And me and you, the owner. He said, ah, which kind of story is this? He said, ah, I know the co-signer. It means we are co, we are co, co means co, co. <laughs> Basically, the co-signer was making a demand that he equally has a share in the house just because. His name was on the document. But to the main Nigerian guy, he found it to be stupid because it is his money that was used as a down payment. It is his money that goes to service the mortgage every month, not the other co-signer's money. The whole co-signer only came on paper. But dude knows the legality of that. So he's using it to say, I am your co-signer. We have a deal together. We own the house. <laughs> this person begins looking at the other person and says, oh my goodness. My fellow Nigerian, see what you did to me? Ah, that's the same way if the loan has also gone bad. You would have, they would have also dumped it on him. So you see, <laughs> co-signer stuff is a real mess of stuff, man. Co-signing for people, it's like <laughs> never co-sign for anybody. Yeah. Even if somebody comes to you, this same concept of co-signing for somebody, yeah, it's just like you taking an insurance for a car, car insurance in a Western country for a friend. Do you know what it means? It means the insurance is in your name, but the car belongs to your friend. 
This, by the way, is insur insurance fraud, by the way. Because that is not how it's supposed to be. You cannot take insurance in your name and give it to a friend. Meanwhile, the insurance is for a friend and you don't disclose it to your insurance company. Right? You are trying to help him by taking insurance on his name because he doesn't qualify for it. Guess what happens? If dude does anything, it's on you. If he's a good driver, it's on you. If he's a bad driver, it's on you. If he commits an accident, he has an accident, he comes back to you. Whatever he does on the road, drunk driving, it comes to you. Are you ready for all of that? You know how many people do this abroad? US, UK, everywhere. You see people taking insurance in their name, but they give it to friends and or in the name of Africans, we are helping each other. They never know the other side of consequences, right? And then when things go bad, they, they were hoping that this guy would drive so good and so well. And then all of a sudden, boom, one bad scenario on the road, boom, boom. Whose name is this? Good. Who owns the car? Good. Can I get your insurance? Good. And then one thing leads to the other. And then they start regretting. Some of these people will end up losing the relationship with their friends because the friend has hurt them by their driving behavior. It may have led to arguments. I was trying to help you and you screwed me up. And I was trying, yeah, that is why when I teach this, I tell people, you gotta know the consequences so that when you decide to commit yourself, you are ready for the question. You cannot do things without knowing consequences. You know, this is the way the Bible they talk. He said, all things are permissible, but not all things are right. You know what it means? It means you can do everything, but there are consequences. <laughs> So if you go do up, just know the consequences. You see, you can go and co sign for somebody, but know the consequences. You see, you can go and take insurance for somebody, but know the consequences. Me, I don't do co signing stuff. No matter, even if you are the pastor of my church, I won't co sign. Did you hear what I said? I don't trust nobody. Except for my wife, who is my half, my other half. My wife is part of me. She's my other half. Spiritually, we are one. So she's the only one I can co sign for. You, my brother, I won't go sign. Even if you are my mother, I won't go sign. You see, they talk up. You, it, I know they make stupid decisions like this. Sir. Now, you have to be too smart. Co sign is dangerous. Let me also give this example. There is a guy from Haiti. Some people pronounce it Haiti. H A I T I. Uh, he's a taxi driver. He's somebody I know. I wouldn't even say he's an intimate friend per se. He's like an acquaintance. Once in a while, we meet, we talk as black people. You know, I was just there one day and then I got a call from a furniture or a, a, a company that, that sells furniture on credit. They sell like furniture to people on credit, meaning you can go and grab all the furniture you want. You don't have to pay for it. And then they will spread it for you to pay in installment for a couple of years and stuff like that. I was just there and then I got a call from this company. <laughs> Hello, is this Choco? I said, yeah, yeah, this Choco. I said, do you have a moment to chat? I said, yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. So we're just following up on a credit application that has your name on it. I said, okay, which company is it? And then he mentioned something, 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 easy, 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 financial, blah, blah, blah. So okay, all right. So this gentleman by name SYZ took a credit from us to buy some furniture. And he had your name under as a co-signer or referee, like a referee, reference or something. I said, all right, what is his name again? He said, yes. I said, okay. And he put my name there? He said, okay. So are you calling to verify this or what? He said, we're just calling to verify. I said, okay, have you already approved the credit for him? He said, yes. I said, that was some damn action there. You don't approve stuff until you confirm and verify information. It looks like you've already approved it and you're trying to verify it after the fact there. I told them right away, that is not how the standard procedure ought to be. You do all the verification before you approve. Fast forward, this is my response to them. I said, I know him as an acquaintance, somebody I say hello to. I have no idea he has used my name and my phone number to go and secure credit. I do not know him. I am by this phone call authorizing you to take my name off your record and go after him. Do you see what I said? I said, I am authorizing you by this phone call, which is recorded, to one, take my name off your record because I don't have any agreement with you guys and make sure you go after the right person. And I also told them, please also put on the annotation on the account, I do not want to be called in relation to this particular conversation. Nobody should call me from the office. They never called. 
again. So you know what this Haitian guy did? He used my name because he knows I have a good credit. Hoping to go and use it to secure a loan. And people do that. Some people will use your name, they will use your information, hoping to go and use it too. And you see, serious financial companies, they'll run all the verification before they even approve it. But small, small financial companies that are just interested in clients, they may approve and go and then <laughs> do the verification later, which is exactly what these guys did. So at least I gave them something. And ever since I talked to them on the phone, they never came back. And I haven't even met that Haitian guy though. Because if I meet that guy, I'm gonna give him some. In fact, I call his number, his number has even been changed. <laughs> and guess what happened? I think when he got a credit from them, he changed his number so they've been trying. <laughs> they've been trying to get hold of him on the phone and then they can't. <laughs> The truth about that guy is that dude does not care about credit score, yeah? His credit score is already down. He doesn't even care. Some people just don't care about credit score, right? They don't care at all. So it gets to a point, they, they may not even have credit cards. No bank will want to give them credit cards because they've destroyed their credit history. And uh, yeah, guess what? Not everybody is interested in having financial, a financially sound life. Some people don't care. There are people I know who borrow money and they go and use it at a casino to go and gamble. They are hoping to win some big jackpot money or bingo. They don't can pay off. But if they don't win, it simply means they have money they owe and they can't pay it. So credit is a whole game. Bottom line here is that if you want to use credit or money which is not yours, you want to make sure you educate yourself on how it works. You want to make sure that you are also rolling with people who know how this is where rich people love playing with credit. In fact, rich people have disclosed that the number one tool for building wealth is credit, your ability to use credit. And you know in the Western world, it is mostly in most countries in the Western world, it is so cheap to get access to loan, isn't it? Really, really cheap. In Canada, about two, three years ago, no, about two years ago, we're getting big money from banks for as low as 1.5 interest rate, one point, whatever, interest, less than 2%, right? Good monies, half a million, close to 1 million for less than 2% interest rate. That simply means free money. So those who actually know how to use money can use this money to leverage them and build wealth. Basically, that is what I use. I use banks' money to build wealth. I use banks' money to build wealth. The houses I buy, I don't buy them with my money. I use banks' money to buy them. But just because I know how to use them or I'm a little bit conscious about my finances, that is how I'm able to do them. But if you don't know how to use it, you can't. Using banks' money or using other people's money in a very smart way to build your own wealth and still pay them back is the term that is called OPM, other people's money. In fact, I have a whole book on OPM uh, up there. If I go up, I could probably pull it and, you know, Michael Fletcher has written a beautiful book, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Boy. You know, I study this because this is how the rich people build their, their, their wealth. Even if they have their own money, they never use it. They are always looking for cheap money with very less interest charges so that they can deploy to build their empires and then pay them back. Jeff Bezos has so much money, he never uses his money to build his business, Amazon. He always goes to the money market to go and borrow money What are through stocks. So those of you who don't know, stocks is an OPM. It's an OPM other people's money. Basically, stock means the company needs money they don't want to go to the bank, so they go to the public and tell the public we are selling you some imaginary certificate. Can you buy it at this amount? Give us your money. We are going to use it to make businesses work. And then when we make profit and we take our share, whatever is left, we come and spread and give you some. That's what it call stocks. Do you see that stocks? The whole idea of stocks, that's how it works. So when you are buying your stocks or shares, buying shares, with MTN, you are literally the one giving MTN money so that MTN can use it to expand its business operation, make all the profit, take their profit back. Then the leftover is shared and given to you, the person who owes the share. It's called OPM, other people's money. Rich people use this a lot. In fact, it's the number one strategy for building wealth, using other people's money. There is no rich person you can find who will tell you they use 100% of their own money to build wealth. They may start with their own money at the beginning, but soon they learn how other people's money work, and they do that. Um, 
the, the there are people i have done but there are friends i have actually relied on whenever i needed money to do some of my businesses for example in recent time one of my friends did a business with me i promised him some really good return within some few months i was doing a project he wanted to hop on so you know what dude brought close to ninety thousand dollars say choco i trust you go and use it we drew the agreement blah 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 i gave him some good return deal was done gave him the money his principal gave him his return that is a deal between me and my friend but he trusts me so he parted it away with his money and gave it to me i use it for the purpose gave him the money back i've also done deal with somebody who gave 50k in fact if you watch my videos you may have seen that particular check i showed it right here you know we had an agreement boom but he's doing that with me because he trusts me and he knows i know my stuff but hey you don't go and give your money to people you don't know when you go give your money to people with no track record when they finish messing you up, you end up calling them DK, 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 whatever. In Ghana, how do they call those words? Eh? Is it men's gold or women's gold or whichever one is here? Eh? Do they have a track record of doing businesses? Do they have a track record of building and using other people's money? They don't have. They just sell it. So most of the Ponzi schemes in Africa right now <laughs> are offering juicy, juicy return. People will never do their diligence so, to see whether this guy has a track record. Uh, me like this, if you come investigate me, when you talk to my friend, they go tell you, say, this guy, we give him money, they bring him back. Boom. See, I'm, I get that track record. My integrity be my reputation. You see, I'm, but you go give some DKM money and you don't know what they've done in the past, how they've handled other people's money, and you just go and give it to them? You go and do some women's gold or men's gold or shoo 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 gold? Eh? And then they take all your money and then at the end of the day, ah, it's gone. You know, in Africa, it's even more dangerous to do this kind of business because we don't have regulations that work. Even if we have regulations, they are not enforced, they are not active, they don't work. But here in the Western world, man, if you screw up people's money, you're looking at jail time. <laughs> they, they actually go jail you. If you do not even go by it in a way like whether it is a syndicated loan or whatever, if you don't do it according to regulations, you could actually be sued and you'll be in jail. But in my country called Sikam Pedidi, that's Ghana's new name, Sikam Pedidi Republic. Where money no they like noise. You go mess up with somebody, take your money, they go make noise. Then tell you already say the Republic be Sikam Pedidi. Money no they like noise. So somebody dip you just for keep quiet like that. See ya. Then scam you just for the, the money no man, Sikam Pedidi. <laughs> Sikam Pedidi. Hey, you dip you away over here, did I won't even say Sikam Pedidi. Charlie, you dip you whatever you do, now they actually know Sikam Pedidi. <laughs> Sikam Pedidi means money no, they, money no, they like noise, yeah? So then scam you just go be quiet, get some poposu, bolly poposu. Eh, I was like like that, then you could just go do. <laughs> All right, guys, that is it about credit score, credit cards. Um, if there is something else I should be covering in the future, it will bring, be on how to use credit cards. I probably will do a video just on that title, how to use credit card. What is credit utilization? If you have a credit card of say 3000 how much of it are you advised to use how much of it should you not use when can you use this amount when should you know what mistake should you not make when you i'll probably do a video in the future on this if you did enjoy it smash the like button and share it i believe we need more financial knowledge many of you living abroad do not use credit cards not because you have your own money and you want to use them you are just afraid of using them and the reason why you're afraid it's actually because you do not know how to use them. I was like that, running away from all the credit cards. In fact, a very good friend of mine was working at a bank, BMO, and uh, he gave me a MasterCard. I think it was $3,000 or $5,000 on that MasterCard. Dude, I only used it once, $50. And I called the bank and I told them, please, cancel this credit card. I don't need it. The truth to us is not that I don't need it all. I was thinking that the bank wanted me to be in debt. So they want me to go and use their money so they can make money off of me. I say, you ain't gonna get me? Please cancel that credit card, that MasterCard. But now where I am right now, yeah? Because I know quite a bit about credit card. I am the one making money off of the banks now, rather. You see, I'm, I have one credit card that when I use, I generate points for traveling. So if you see me on a business class or something, just know that it is points for my credit card that I'm using to travel. I have another credit card that when I use, it finances all my small, small purchases at Walmart, like the one I showed you yesterday. I have over $263 on that one in bonuses alone. You can go to Walmart and swipe it. Right, remember, 
these are all purchases that i would have done anyway i would have bought fuel anyway i would have gone for food shopping anyway i would have bought clothes for my children anyway but i'm still making money off of them just because i have applied myself to learning a little bit on how credit cards work i hope you understand credit cards are tools for building wealth but it can be tools to destroy those who do not use them it's like a two-edged sword if you don't know how to use credit cards it will hurt you if you know how to use them you will soon be smiling like a rich man my position is i encourage you to learn how it works how people use them smartly use them certain credit cards that work for you or may not work for you remember purely for education i'm not recommending credit cards to you i'm not telling you to go and get them i'm only telling you if you care to know just do some education credit cards are a tool for building wealth rich people use credit now, in the future i will do videos on line of credit i will do videos on uh, open line of credit closed line of credit secured and unsecured line of credit uh he love home equity line of credit um i will probably do a video on this one if you do like this one share your comments share them if i see that people like them i'll probably do more it's been a long time since we did final videos we'll be back to them all right thanks for watching choco melonia do have a good day remember we don't need more money we need more wisdom god bless all of us with more wisdom have a good day Bye bye